We're here with a very familiar face, Richard Hammond. Tell us why you're at the stadium. Well, we're making a show called <clears throat> Richard Hammond's Big. I know, yeah, it's not wasted on me, don't worry. Um, and each week we're looking at a big and amazing marvel of engineering. And, well, hello, <laughs> this thing qualifies. Next time on Richard Hammond's Big. Ugh. Tottenham Hotspur, the most advanced sports stadium in the world. The steepest stands, the biggest TV screens, the first to have its own brewery. The first football pitch I've ever driven. It's like being a mole, popping your head up in the middle of a lawn. And it transforms into an American football field. Right now, this building feels like what it is. And we're seeing. You'll never know. Richard Hammond's big. So we're here to look at the stadium, um, to be dazzled by the engineering is dual purpose and when you see I have actually seen this move now 10,000 tons of pitch splits into three and rolls out it's just it's the sort of thing well I'd have designed as a kid and then been told don't be stupid but they've done it first time I came here driving down the high street you've got shop shop building society office massive stadium from the future all of a sudden so it's it's going to have an effect on its area it does and there's a huge responsibility that's clearly taken very very seriously here for making sure it does that so it's an incredible project yeah amazing to look at this is the story of how a stadium can transform the way sport is both watched and played Worldwide, a staggering 1.4 billion people watch live English Premier League soccer matches. With that kind of audience, the playing surface has to be immaculate. So all 500 million blades of grass are as preened and pampered as the players that run upon them. 62,000 fans will pour through the turnstiles and stadium staff have their work cut out to be ready in time for kickoff. Luckily for them, I'm here to help. I think what's most impressive about it, and what's most impressed me thus far, is the scale of thinking and scale of ambition. Because you could, on paper, say, yeah, OK, well, I can imagine, yeah, the pitch could, like, slide out. But then when you see it in reality, you've got to have those huge trees that are supporting the south stand there, which means the pitch doesn't just have to slide, it has to split, split into three parts. And then, where's it going to go? <laughs> it goes into the car park, which... Again, on paper, you'd think, yeah, I can imagine that. But then in reality, it's 10,000 tonnes of machinery. And it's a living, breathing pitch. That's real grass. It's just come out now. It's been in there for 14 days. Well, grass doesn't like that. So it's, it's problem after problem after problem that's been addressed. And the result is, as you see now, a rather beautiful pitch has just rolled out. I wouldn't claim to be an exceptionally bright man, but even I have spotted a pattern. Episode after episode of this show, there comes a point when I have to put all this type of stuff on, and shortly after which, I'm absolutely terrified. I think I've got to walk up there, and there's nothing on the side, and it's going to be a load of people who do this all the time, and they're completely confident. No, I'm up here, it's fine, don't look down, it's fine, while I'm just screaming inside. Richard Hammond's Big was a bad title for a series. Richard Hammond's Low would have been good. Richard Hammond's modestly sized. Now, now you've lived the dream of most Spurs fans because you have been up there and no one else has yet. What was that like? Well, um. I don't have to do it again, do I? Unless you pay. Pay? <laughs> the people will. They're mad. Oh. Look at it this way. I had my eyes shut for more than you will when you go up. It's really high up. <laughs> and the annoying thing is my camera guy. He was giving it. Oh yes, fine. Look at that. And I'm over the over the handrail like that. It was. Just, I'm not very good at heights. It's really high up. It's really, really high up. Football. With four billion fans, it's the biggest sport in the world. And top clubs are building bigger and more sophisticated stadiums. I lost in a sea of 62,000 souls in this vast stadium. Yeah, this is big engineering and I feel small. Tottenham Hotspur's new London stadium has more firsts than any other. These stands are the steepest in the UK and then above them, the biggest TV screens in Western Europe. Inside, it's got the longest bar in Europe. This is the first stadium to have its own brewery. 
It even has the ability to transform its soccer pitch into an American football field. It's like being in America. But I've not come here to watch a match. I'm here to discover what it takes to build and run the most advanced sports stadium in the world. Tottenham Hotspur's new billion-pound home is the biggest Premier League stadium in the capital. This massive construction took over 5,000 people three years to build. 72,000 square metres of concrete were poured and 1,600 doors were installed. It's an incredible feat of engineering. But this isn't just the story of a massive building. This is the story of how a stadium can transform the way sport is both watched and played. It's match day. In less than six hours, 62,000 fans will pour through the turnstiles and stadium staff have their work cut out to be ready in time for kickoff. Luckily for them, I'm here to help. Wow, when something is this big, it tends to mess with your perspective. Looking now, those screens are huge. And this is it. Oh, wait a minute. Are we completely sure? OK, I'll get shouted at. Here we go. Did it. I'm meeting one of the most important members of the team. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Stadium head groundsman Wayne Billing. I'm told he lives, sleeps and dreams grass. I'll just tell the boys you're coming down. They'll be, they'll be over the moon for the help. Gents, we've got Richard coming down to give us a hand putting the portables on, so brace yourselves. A team of 20 groundsmen work behind the scenes in this incredible place, getting it ready for match day. What do you all do? <laughs> help us. Help yeah, us. Oh, right, I'm with them. I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, these are my people now. I'm also a helper. The only difference is they know what they're doing and I haven't got a clue. I, I don't think of it just as a building. It is a machine and it can transform. And it doesn't just change the pitch, it actually changes the atmosphere. It's, it's a different, not just a different sport, it's a different business coming in and a different culture, a different cultural feel. So it, it's incredibly flexible. But also, and you often find this when form follows function closely enough, when it, it looks the way it does simply because of what it does, it ends up being rather beautiful. And I think it is, I think it's a really good look. It's quite a, a sculptural building, which is, I mean, that's a bonus, because it's got all these incredible functions, it does its amazing stuff, and, well, it's beautiful to look at. Well, that's clever. Supporting your team is thirsty work, but most bars only have to deal with a few hundred customers, not tens of thousands. Tottenham Stadium is so big, it demands a new approach to making sure they don't run out of beer, because that would be bad. All I know about beer is that it's delicious and made with malt, which, it turns out, is heavy. I have to say other brands of beer are available, and they are. In total, Tottenham sell around 65,000 pints every match day, most of them served in a 15-minute window at half time. Now, you'd think that would be impossible, but not here, because they've built the longest bar in Europe. At 65 metres from end to end, it would almost stretch across the pitch. It's impressively big. Engineer Chris Keenan helped design this incredibly high dance floor. Is this far enough? <laughs> That's hysterical laughter, it's not joy. Oh! The new cockerel is an exact copy of the one on Spurs' original and much smaller stadium. But to look the same size to the fans, this one had to be three times bigger because this stadium is so much higher. This scaled-up replica even includes the dent where a player shot the smaller original with an air rifle. 